bang bang chitty chitty bang bang chitty bang bang chitty chitty bang bang chitty bang bang chitty chitty bang bang oh you Chitty Chitty Bang Bang Bang, starring Dick Van Dyke and adapted from the book by Ian Fleming of James Bond fame, debuted in 1968. It tells the tale of eccentric inventor Caractacus Potts and his two children, Jeremy and Jemima. We believe this was actually a precursor to all the restoration car shows you see on television today. The kids discover a burned out old race car sentenced for demolition when they convince their father to buy it and fix it up. Caractacus doesn't just fix it up, he builds it to float, fly, and drive on its own. Self-driving cars, get out of here. All those added bells and whistles serve the pots and Caractacus's love interest, truly scrumptious well, as they try to save Lord Scrumptious and Caractacus's father, Grandpa Potts, from the capture of evil Baron Bomburst of Bulgaria, who kidnapped the men in an attempt to steal Chitty. In the end, Chitty drives, flies, and swims to save the day. Caractacus and Scrumptious kiss, decide to get married, and live happily ever after. Two thumbs up. But now to the sequel, which brings us back here to Stalls. This Chitty arrived here just two weeks ago. It's one of the newest members of the collection and is believed to be one of only two fully operational vehicles used in the film. Now, a total of five cars were built for the movie. Two for the driving scenes, two designed to float, and one for the flying scene, plus several other scale models for special effects. It's difficult to confirm, but this car was in at least two scenes in the movie. One where Lord Scrumptious is driving behind Chitty tooting the horn, and where Chitty goes down the red staircase before leaving Bulgaria. It's also believed this was the car used in the self-driving scenes. How to know for sure? This car was built differently. Discerning viewers will notice the vertical strips in the grille as opposed to the horizontal bars on some of the other versions. It was also believed that this car was built narrower and with a higher steering wheel than some of the other versions. Excuse me. It's saying chitty 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 bang bang chitty 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 bang bang chitty chitty bang bang. You know, I never thought naming a car after a motor that sounds like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was all that flattering, but in reality, what resides underneath the bonnet, as they say across the pond, is an English-made Ford 3-liter V6. While Chitty was made to replicate an early 1900s race car, underneath it was very much 1960s Blue Oval technology. As good as Chitty looked, it actually performed better by air and sea than it did on land. According to Dick Van Dyke himself, and I quote, earmuffs chitty, the car was a little difficult to maneuver with the turning radius of a battleship, end quote. Ouch, babe. Okay, so maybe she wasn't very nimble, but she had it where she needed it with her brass and copper trim and accessories, leather upholstery and custom made Goodyears. The dash was even taken from a British World War I fighter plane. Old Caractacus had an eye for detail, right down to the license plate. The custom tag, Gen 11, was derived from the Latin word genai, meaning magical person or being. With all of that style and magical movie performance, it's no wonder Chitty Chitty Bang Bang has been coveted by collectors and villains alike. But let this be a lesson to you, evil Baron Bomburst. You can steal Chitty in the movie and you can't have her now because she's heavily guarded here by all of her friends and fans at Stalls. <laughs>